what is code, really? If you're thinking about making a game for the first time, or if you're just curious about how they work, then you might be wondering how code, the programming that executes a game's logic, is written. But there are a lot of ways to code a game. For example, you could make everything yourself, building your game and the engine it runs in from scratch. Or you could write as little code as possible, using visual scripting tools to create behavior for you without ever actually writing a script. While one approach that many people take is to use a fully featured game engine, such as Unity, Unreal, or Godot, which provides most of the system level functionality for you, allowing you to focus on creating just the game's logic. The logic of a game is the behavior of its objects, the calculations that happen while it's running, and the rules of execution that make a game fundamentally what it is. And it's probably what you're most likely to think of when you imagine the inner workings of a game's code. But how does game logic actually work? And if you're planning on making a game for the first time, how can you use code to create it? This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes led by industry experts in design, development, and content creation, making learning a new skill easy. For example, for a while now, I've been wanting to learn how to use Fusion, which is the motion graphics and visual effects tool that's built into DaVinci Resolve, which I use to make my videos. After taking a Skillshare class, I'm now much more comfortable using it, and I'll be using it more often in my videos from now on. Next, I'll be exploring some of Skillshare's game development categories, such as 3D modeling, pixel art, and shaders. And if you're interested in trying a class for yourself, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. So, what is code? While it seems complex, code is actually very simple. Sometimes. Generally speaking, at its core, all code is just the comparison or manipulation of its most primitive data types, where a primitive type is one of a set of basic information types from which all other data can be constructed. For example, in the C-sharp programming language, which is the high-level language that Unity uses, these basic data types include integral whole number types, floating point types, true or false booleans, characters and strings of characters, and object references. These basic types can then be used to create more complex data structures, such as vector3 values, which, at their core, are simply a combination of three floating point numbers for the x, y, and z values in the data structure. These more complex data types can then be used to represent information in a game, such as a position, a rotation, or a color. They could be further combined with other data types to build complex instances, unique classes that can be referenced and that can be used to represent in-game objects. These objects form the subjects of your game and, when they interact, create logic. Fundamentally, the interaction between any two objects is still only a comparison or modification of its most basic data types. For example, imagine a situation in which a player object takes some damage from an enemy. The player has a health value, which is a floating point number, while the enemy has an attack damage value, also a number. When the game executes, and when the enemy attacks the player, its health is reduced by the value of the attacking enemy. This is a modification of data, where an operator, in this case the subtraction operator, is used to reduce the player's health. The health value can then be compared against zero to see if the player has died or not. In this example, the player's health and the enemy's attack value are both declared variables. They exist inside their respective classes, and they can be modified over time. Meaning that a player's health can be reduced by multiple enemies, with each one dealing new damage to the player. At which point the health value is compared using a conditional statement to check if it's below zero. Here, zero is a literal type. Unlike variables, which are variable, it doesn't change, it just is, and as is the case with most primitive types, like booleans, numbers, or strings, it can be entered explicitly by typing it out. In many ways, literal types are the starting point of all other data, since it's almost impossible to create logic without using literal types first, to specify how much health an object should have, how fast it should move, or the color of its material. 
after which data can be stored and modified over time using a combination of literal types and declared variables. While this is an extremely simple example, at its most basic level, this is what most logic looks like, where statements are used to change or compare data. And in the same way that complex classes can be created by organizing basic data types, complex logic can be created by organizing basic statements, creating a single executable unit of logic known as a function. Functions, sometimes called methods, are blocks of reusable logic that can take data in and give data back. They work like small machines that have a limited number of externally accessible controls that can be used to trigger the statements contained inside of it. For example, let's say that you wanted to use a function to reduce the player's health. In c -sharp, you could do this by creating a publicly accessible function on the player that an enemy can use to damage it. In this case, the function takes a parameter, a damage value in the form of a number, which when triggered is removed from the health value. The benefit of doing it like this is that the health class can adjust the incoming data as it needs to, such as by clamping it to a particular range or by scaling it to account for modifiers, such as armor. Functions can also optionally return information, such as a boolean true or false value, for example, to feed back to the enemy whether or not the player was killed. Chances are your first basic functions are likely to look something like this, a set of statements and conditions that execute in order when the function is triggered. However, functions are also used to provide built-in functionality. For example, between the Unity engine and the libraries that the c -sharp language is built on, you'll find ready-made functions for creating and destroying objects, performing mathematical calculations that aren't covered by basic operators, and class-specific functions that can be used to move objects around or interact with the components that are attached to them. This works because functions, like variables, live inside classes and class-like data structures. In an object-oriented programming language like c -sharp, this is pretty much how everything works, and although it's not quite as simple as that, it can be said that pretty much everything is built around the concept of variables, functions, classes, and statements. And while not all programming languages work in this way, many of them incorporate similar concepts. As a result, if you're comfortable with one language, it can make other programming languages easier to pick up. But organizing data into classes and creating functions to execute statements does not make logic on its own. And one of the hardest concepts to visualize, especially as a beginner, is the order in which everything will happen. When will a function execute? If two things happen at once, which will happen first? And how can you trigger logic in a game so that it behaves in the way you want it to? There are typically only a limited number of ways in which game logic can be executed. Either the player does something, something happens coincidentally, or something happens due to the passing of time. In real terms, this means that most chains of logic are rooted in only a few different types of interaction, such as input events, physics events, time-based events, such as something that happens every frame or after a certain amount of time has passed, and event-based logic, where one thing happens in direct response to another. However, fundamentally, all of those events are likely to be rooted in just one type of repeating action, an update cycle that happens every frame. For example, Unity has a predictable order of execution that largely revolves around the update function, which is automatically called every frame to process logic that happens every frame, such as incremental movement or adding up time. Likewise, there are other event messages that are triggered at different times in the frame or the object's lifecycle that can be used to start chains of logic, such as when two physics objects collide, when an object is turned on or off, or when input is received. These are the starting points for all logic in Unity and many other game engines as well, where the functions of your game can ultimately be traced back to just a handful of starting points. Even when using event-based logic, where one function waits for something else to happen and then executes its own logic in response, there are still only a few different ways that the circumstances of your game can actually change. So much so that a common way to pause a game, at least in Unity, is to reduce the time scale to zero, which doesn't stop the game, but does prevent things that could influence its logic to take place, such as movement or behaviors that are scaled by the timescale value, which is typically everything. Understanding how logic is executed in a particular engine 
can be one of the biggest hurdles to learning how to program a game. But knowing how it works can give you an idea of the types of interaction that will cause particular logic to take place and where that logic should start, which in turn can give you an idea of how to organize your code, where functions and data should live, and how it should all interact with each other. Which is important, since deciding how to organize your code is usually harder than writing it. The technical process of typing out code can be tricky, but it's not as important as understanding the concepts behind what you're trying to do. In fact, even if you're very comfortable with a programming language, you're still likely to routinely forget how to type out certain functions. This is one of the reasons that visual programming tools, such as Unreal's Blueprints or Visual Scripting for Unity, aren't necessarily easier than traditional programming, since while they can be faster to use, you still need to understand when and how the logic in your game is going to be triggered. As a result, if you have a good enough understanding of the concepts behind game logic and how it's written, it doesn't really matter if you use visual programming tools or not. And after all, whether you write your code manually or use visual tools instead, the code that exists in the finished game will not be the same as the code you use while working on it. Far from it. When you program a game, you'll typically use a high-level language, such as C-sharp, to program its logic. High-level means that the language is closer to the spoken language of the programmer, which, put simply, means that it uses words you can actually understand. While low-level code is closer to the machine code instructions required by a CPU, offering little or no abstraction in between. For example, in Unity, when you build your game, your high-level code is compiled into a lower-level language, usually a common intermediate language, which is then compiled into machine code when the game runs. This is just-in-time compilation, where the native application is compiled when the game is started. Alternatively, ahead-of-time compilation compiles the game before it's loaded, and usually offers better performance at the cost of flexibility. In either case, however, the end goal is the same to translate your high-level code into a format that the CPU can actually understand, machine code that issues instructions to the processor. These instructions involve moving data in and out of a number of registers, at which point they can be compared, modified, or read to create logic. Just like how, at a higher level, human-readable programming languages are still just the manipulation of basic data types. So what is code? No matter how you look at it, or how you write it, at its core, code is always the manipulation of a language's most primitive types of data. Which is why, especially as a beginner, the hardest part of understanding code isn't necessarily memorizing the syntax of a programming language. It's understanding how you will use the features of that language to create data. How you'll organize that data into functions and classes in a way that actually makes sense to you, and how you'll trigger each function to execute the code of your game. And if you're serious about learning how to write your own code, try my C-sharp scripting course, How to Code in Unity, where you'll master the basics of creating your own gameplay with code. Now I want to hear from you. What's been your experience with learning how to code? Did you find it easy, or did you find it difficult? And has learning one language helped you to pick up another? Whatever it is, let me know by leaving a comment, like this video if you found it useful, and get subscribed for more videos from me. I'll see you next time.